After KSTP's and Tom Hauser's show at Issue, I talked to Michelle Bachman, Bob Anderson, and Terrell Clark. A couple of heated exchanges this morning. Um, you know, you seem sort of uh, disappointed with some things Clark said. I mean, do you think that she's trying to misrepresent you or um, on specific well, issues? Or? I think, I mean, this this has been her pattern through all of the debates. Is she goes rapid fire and she puts out one statement after another that's false. And then the question is, does, do I um, be Minnesota nice and let all of these statements go out and then go back and correct her statements, or do I jump in? And so that's what the question that I need to do is. I, I'm, I'm actually fairly surprised because it seems to me in a debate, what you want to be able to do or put make your case and put your positions out, and instead she's, she's spending all of her time bashing. So it, she's running a very negative campaign. It's been indicative of what she's done from the beginning. Do you think the media has accurately portrayed you, know, you and your opponent? I'm talking to these two. Yeah. <laughs> well, abortion hasn't really been discussed before today, and you said that she she's supports partial birth abortion. Can you back so up? So we're not going to talk to the What are you basing that on? Well, she's supported by Emily's list, and one of the requirements to be uh, supported by Emily's list, she's received over $100,000 for them. Uh, your is to be right a supporter of partial birth abortion. She did like not deny that, that um, in her comment. That's I just think a that's part the of the story. Illness. Well, she said, but she said it was false when you were saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, she, but then she went back again afterwards and was talking about, well, we need to leave this up to a woman and her doctor, et cetera, et cetera. Well, mm -hmm. uh, e either you're 40 or not. So I, you'll have to ask her. I mean, she, she'll have to be the one to make that statement. But but for to, to, to be a recipient of Emily's list, right. you have to be in agreement with their statement. And mm -hmm. part of that is to be for partial birth abortion. And right. again, you know, if, if you're for that, then make the case. Right. If you're not, don't. I'm not. The last so. thing was uh, Tom when, when she okay. says um, When you say, when she says leave it between the woman and her doctor, to you that equates to if that's if that's what they come up with. I think you'll have to ask her. Okay. You'll have to talk to her about that and ask her. Yep, you're ready, Congressman. Um, Thank you. One thing that Hauser had asked was about this privatization of Social Security. Is that something that you that you would endorse in any form? I mean, is there um, you know, a proposal in there that you're more interested in than others um, as it's, far as what to do with the actual program? To be able to get Social Security and Medicare on a strong foundation and strong footing going forward. What we have to do is we have to look at, it's, it's a very complicated issue. It's complicated here in Minnesota and at the state level. It's very complicated at the federal level too. So what we need to do, it, it isn't conducive to a 30 second sound bite to say, this is how all social security in 15 seconds or 30 seconds. It really is an issue that's going to take both Republicans and Democrats. Everyone has to sit down at the Is there the table. any concept that you'd be more supportive of? Congresswoman, well, we need we need reform, go. but I, I think I think what's important again is to let people, like I said, who are 65 years and older, know your life isn't going to change because we can't do that. We've made it. We've made, we've made an agreement and a contract with them, but we also know that we're looking at unfunded federal net liabilities in excess of a hundred trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. We, we don't have the resources to be able to fulfill the, those obligations. So therefore, those who are on the younger um, age scale will probably have reforms that, will, that I believe will be alternatives that will actually make their retirement years better than they are now. Because we're looking at perhaps, um, it, it's, it's a very low rate of return that people receive on Social Security. So I think it's better if we have alternatives that allow people to do more with their own money. Because just like you paid into like Social Security, it? well, no, I, again, it all has to be on the table to look at. But you've invested money, I've invested money. Um, if, you, if you look at the way that government has taken that money and what they've done with it, they aren't, they aren't maximizing the potential for your return and for mine. And if you ask people today, will you have Social Security? Will it be there for you when you're older? If you ask younger people, more younger people think, believe in UFOs than they do in the fact that they're going to be receiving Social Security when they get older. My real worry more than anything are for the vulnerable. We have a lot of vulnerable people who the only thing between them and, and existence is their Social Security check and their Medicare. I want to make sure it doesn't go away. When this is not a political issue. This is a reality. Congresswoman, you ready? Right. So, Let's go. But when you the big issue, though, that uh, the whole campaign has been jobs and the economy. From the very beginning, that's the number one issue is jobs and the economy, and that's, again, what we're going to end on. Ready? You said you helped unwed mothers. Yeah. Camp. Is that this different from the foster children yeah. that you took? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything we did that separately. That well, we, we, just, we, we believe firmly that we wanted to take our pro-life convictions 
farther than just voting or speaking. We wanted to actually help people. And so we reached out to unwed mothers that came to our attention and we helped them. Any specifics so, of how you helped them? Or? Um, we, we cared for them and I went through childbirth classes. I went with one woman through, through her labor and delivery. And so we wanted to do what we could in a personal supportive way to be a part of that. Thank so, you. Thank Ready, you. Congresswoman? The, the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any reason why, whenever there, you do a, a report in the paper, mm -hmm. that you don't yeah, ever like, include Bob uh, as no, a candidate in the thing. You always say the two candidates. Right? That's good. <laughs> you know, Thanks for the uptake. How you doing? <laughs> you always say the two candidates that are running, and yet, you, if anything, you put a little snippet. I'm not going to answer anything with the, with the camera on my well, face. Why not? I'm going to answer. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Well, I'm just, it's just a question. I'm not, I'm not being put on the I'm not being, but it's just a question. I'm free to talk to you if there's no camera on my face. That's all I'm saying. I'm not a problem. Bob, do you want to talk? Yeah, we start. Um, what did you um, feel about today's debate? I thought it was a clear picture that shows the viewing audience that we're not getting anywhere with these two parties. They're representing the powers of their party and they're fighting against each other. We need to try an independent. And I think the people are starting to see that. Bob, I counted the interruptions. I didn't count any for you at all. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> but, you know, and it's really, it's unfortunate because I invited both Congresswoman Bachman State Senator Terrell Clark, Aubrey Immelman, and myself up to a big forum yesterday. We sent out a press release a week ago. We posted it on our website. We had, were in the big parade up in Anoka County. We had all the captive audience of all the people in the district to come and be, meet us candidates. Just an open forum. We had the room reserved. It was right there. It was handicap accessible. Not only did the media not even mention it, but the candidates didn't even reply except for Aubrey Immelman. The other one on the ballot replied and said he would attend. We had a perfect opportunity for everybody to meet us up, you know, close and personal, and just meet us. They won't do it. They shouldn't be running. So is the media a part of the oh, yes, party yes, system? Yes, yes, it is. Both of these machines have the powers, and they also have their media that are on their corner. You saw it the Star Tribune did in the editorial board telling people to not vote for Bob Anderson. That's crossing the line. That Jill Burkham should get a blog. She can do that. They have Dump Bachman blog. They could have a Dump Anderson blog. But you don't do it under the Minneapolis Didn't Star Tribune. Did there at a Horner editorial? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how ridiculous it is. They say to vote for Tom Horner, Independence Party, but don't vote for Bob Anderson. You're wasting your vote. It doesn't make any sense. They should be called out on it. That Jill Burkham should be disciplined. And they should make sure that they can endorse the candidate. That's perfectly fine. But don't single out a, per a particular candidate and say, don't vote for this one. That's not their job. It's pathetic. Where do you go from here in the next uh, 48 hours? We're going to keep getting the message out. Now, there's a big function in Woodbury tonight. Ed Schultz is having uh, some of the Democrats. He won't let me on his show, so I just might happen to show up over there because Woodbury is about two blocks from my place. So I might go over there and see if Big Ed will have us maybe have a little open forum. You know, maybe MSNBC would like to have another opinion on there besides just strictly Democrats. Let's get us, let's, let's let the people meet us. That's national television. Fox News kept me in their documentary. I don't see why Ed, Big Ed Schultz is afraid to have me on. He won't even return our calls. Can I just ask you a quick sure. Um, you said that you're a pro-life Catholic. Yes. You wouldn't change current abortion laws. Right. Well, unless because if it's not going to come up to a vote, I'll guarantee you with the, with the Obama administration in there right now, the law of the land is what we have. I just am a pro-life Catholic in this race. I fit this district. Terrell Clark is trying. She took the money from Emily's list. Well, that's fine. But then she's got to stand behind what they push. That's not a great endorsement to have in the 6th District. But you're saying you don't think the law would change, but you could no. go there and propose changes. Would you propose any changes? No. Okay. Nope. I'm going there to get the economy and the jobs taken yeah. care of and put a first-time independent in the House of Representatives where it's only made up of Democrats and Republicans. Why not try something different? It's only a two-year position. That's what people forget. In two years, if I don't live up to the expectations, you vote me out. You fire me. And I, want, I run for re-election on my merits. If I don't do the job, I'm going to get voted. I'm not going to spend $10 million to get reelected. That means I'm not doing my job. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, All right. I'm set. I'm set. But you know what? I'm the set. media, this is how pathetic it is. St. Paul Pioneer Press is reporting today that this was a taped interview. Neither one of us are from the Pioneer Press. So. Yeah, but you guys are the ones that didn't even mention the big forum I had up in Anoka yesterday. I met Terrell Clark. Her campaign staff didn't even know she was there. I said, is Terrell going to be here? They said, I don't know. She was 10 minutes. She was 10 feet away from me. <laughs> So you guys, in the paper, now you didn't mention anything about where I was yesterday. 
in Anoka. We had the big tent. We had the big forum plan. Why wasn't that mentioned in the article? A lot of candidates and a lot of races. There's you three know, in this have, race. Well, there's four. Aubrey Immelman actually was there. Was I have 11 inches to cover about every race Mr. in the state. I really got to get into the park. park. So, I'm sorry. Hey, Bob. You know. So you guys haven't talked about abortion until this debate. I think it's yet another good example of if you disagree with her about something, she says you're lying. Time and time again throughout this debate, that's what she does. She's been spending over $9 million now telling people things that are lies about me, and that's not any different. Do you think she has a strategy to actually interrupt you during these debates? I oh, absolutely. Count that's why I thought, one. Yes, which is why I tried to make sure that she got that this is supposed to be a respectful conversation and that we should actually be talking, especially when you only have 24 minutes to talk. You know, it's not like our founders who got to have many hours over many weeks. Uh, so I, I think that what she showed again is that whether it was Social Security, foreclosures, outsourcing, jobs, if I disagree with her, she says I'm lying and she cuts me off. The bottom line is Social Security is solvent right now. Uh, we are, are in a place that uh, we need to be working together across our country to bring people together to actually solve real problems. But that's not what she's interested in. You know, she has no record. She has nothing to stand up for and say about herself. So all she's doing is, is telling lies about me. So we what is the partial birth thing? I mean, she accused you of supporting partial birth abortion. What's I? Who knows what it is she's saying? She's just saying a bunch of words. That's what she does. She's been in Congress for four years. She's done nothing to actually bring down the abortion rates. I have worked hard my whole life, starting out as a counselor for pregnant and parenting teens, uh, working on developing teen pregnancy prevention programs. I've sponsored legislation on adoption tax credits. I have worked to make sure that affordable health care, prenatal care, uh, delivery coverage is available, and child care. I mean, those are the things that we know. We can come together. It really is time that we have a new coalition in this country. And what she is saying and doing is not actually bringing any of the rates down. My point is that if somebody is in a really awful spot and a doctor decides that they need to do something, that's between the doctor and and the mom. She's saying because you're endorsed by Emily's List, then you are... Yeah, she um, knows nothing about what Emily's List actually promotes or, or doesn't promote. Do they she, not support partial birth abortion? I, what, you know, it, it, I don't even know if it's worth going into exactly what Emily's List Well, she's List saying supports. if you're endorsed by them that you have to yeah. sort of subscribe to their platform. No, I, and actually I don't them. think, I, I don't, she's accusing me of a number of things. And again, if I disagree with her, she says it's lying. And that's really what the big issue is here. So, the, you know, again, if somebody has something, if a mother's life is in danger, uh, that's between a doctor and the mom. And I, those situations are awful, and I think she is preying um, on some last-minute politicking. You know, she keeps doing this over and over and over. She's sending out two to three uh, attack ads per week. She is sending, uh, she's on her 10th ad. Ten million dollars. I mean, that's obscene. It's a ridiculous amount of money. She has nothing to say for herself, and all she is doing is making up things. But about you would it. describe yourself as pro-choice, correct? I believe that it's important that ultimately that we make abortion rare, safe, and legal. Because, because making it illegal doesn't mean that there aren't any. Why do you think she's using ads instead of debates to get the message across? Well, I think she's, because she's afraid of talking, or you just saw in there, she made up things again about Social Security. Social Security is solvent. She is scaring seniors. She is scaring people. She wants people to be afraid and to uh, be distrustful. And, you know, that's not how we solve our problems in this country. It's important that when we disagree that we can focus on getting things done. You know, just like my record in the state senate where I've worked really hard to make sure we're balancing the budget but we're not putting our families and our communities and our small businesses in harm's way. She's made things up there too. So I think she knows that she, because she is by her own admission, said that she has not passed a single substantial piece of legislation that will help a, a family or anybody in our district. She knows she's wrong. She knows that if people know the truth about her record that that they will vote against her. So she is making up things and I uh, guess a Hail Mary pass. And that's what she's been doing through this whole whole election cycle. Are you sticking to your schedule for the rest of the day or anything added yes. to it or okay. Do you think we'll let media, you know if anything do changes. Do you think the media is accurately portraying you and your opponent? No. Actually I think they've let her off the hook on a pretty ongoing basis. And what? Everything. 
everything. I, I'm going to guess, including on today. And I don't mean to say that across the board, but I think she says things, it is when she says things that are wrong, it's not a story because it's gotten to be so frequent now. Um, and if she is saying that somebody, you know, is lying because they disagree with her, think, take the whole thing with Ron Shera now. You know, she just said that Ron Shera was a liar again, too, on the sportsman's uh, uh, issue on the constitutional amendment and so while there had been fleeting moments where she has checked because it's a daily or multi-daily occurrence maybe it's because uh, the press can't keep up or maybe it's because of reduced resources but I think she's been a lot off the hook and I think even our budget balancing uh, votes are a good example she's framed them in one way it was a budget bill. It was a budget bill. It wasn't a tax bill. So I think, you know, that she, she really has done a great job by uh, spending a hoard of money to try to convince people about things that are just flat out lies. And I guess she's just trying to buy the election now. But the America we would live in is not the America that I really believe that Minnesotans want to live in. It is not, you know, she, in it, teachers are money launderers. People my age would be weaned off of Social Security and Medicare. Uh, making BP pay was extortion. You know, she wants no regulations for our big corporations. That worked really well in the Gulf. And our police officers, our firefighters, our veterans, it's wasteful spending. And, you know, now she, in there she's trying to say that there's no money there for Social Security. Well, that's not true. And let's, let's get past this fear and device. IOUs, essentially. I mean, that, that, that idea it is, is not absolutely true. solvent, and she knows it. She knows it's solvent. Just she is trying to make people think that there is no money there, that it's not that it's not going to be there. Just for a it. clarification on the abortion thing. I mean, do you support the platform of Emily's List? I uh, couldn't tell you what the platform of Emily's List is right now. What I support is is absolutely reducing abortions. We can come, we can come together, reduce them 90, 95 percent, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that it's important that uh, ultimately that. We're not putting more women in harm's way. And partial birth abortions, you do not Again, support that? The way that she is trying to use this is a, a manufactured way to make people be afraid. If, if something has gone terribly wrong and a woman's going to lose her life and they make a decision with a doctor, I don't know what means the doctor's going to use. Obviously, if there's any way to safely deliver the child, that's what you want. Are you saying in cases where the life of the mother is at stake? I'm saying that I am not a doctor, so I don't know which version, which kinds of, of, of uh, procedures the doctor would have in a life-threatening situation. But, but again, but only the, issue, situations the issue is that we are looking for ways to reduce abortions. And now she's managed to get you all off track again. She did it again absolutely fabulously. Instead of focusing on the issues that are in front of us and where we really need to go, she has gotten you off track. So anyways, I think we're done. <laughs> I'll see you all absolutely. later.